Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about the concept of offline wallets. We're going to talk a little bit about how it's even possible to have a wallet that's completely offline, given that Bitcoin is digital cash. We're going to talk about the different types of offline wallets and we're going to talk about why you might want to use an offline wallet. So first, let's get started by talking about how it's even possible to have a wallet that's offline when we're talking about peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Bitcoin is money for the internet, or as Andreas Antonopoulos puts it, the internet of money. This is a technology that operates online over a network but the way that the system is designed, you can actually store Bitcoin offline for long-term storage. And this is because when you have a cryptocurrency wallet, that wallet doesn't actually store the Bitcoin itself or the Litecoin itself. What your wallet really is, is a key store. Your wallet stores securely generated cryptographic private keys that control your ownership of your cryptocurrency. Your secure keys are used to generate your receiving address through a one-way algorithm. So when somebody sends you some cryptocurrency to your public address, what they're actually doing is sending that those funds to a public key and that transaction is stored on the blockchain. So somebody creates a transaction to send you money and that transaction now saying that your public key or address is the owner of that Bitcoin is stored on this widely distributed public ledger called the blockchain. But your private keys come into play only when you actually go to spend that Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency at a later time. When you have some amount of cryptocurrency that you own and that ownership is recorded on the blockchain, when you go to spend that cryptocurrency, your private key stored in your wallet is used to sign that new transaction for spending. So if you want to send some amount of Bitcoin to another person, say a friend or an online store, your wallet uses your private key to sign that transaction to uh, prove to the rest of the Bitcoin network that you're the rightful owner of those funds. But you don't have to have the private key involved at all to actually receive that Bitcoin in the first place. So what you can do then is you can generate a key pair, a private key and the associated address completely offline and actually receive Bitcoin at that address over time. And that's because the transactions where you actually receive that cryptocurrency are just recorded on the blockchain network. But you don't need the keys to be online for that receiving to occur. You only need the private key to sign a transaction and you need to be online to broadcast that transaction for spending to the rest of the network. So now let's talk a little bit about the types of offline wallets that exist. The first types of offline wallets that came into popularity early on are what are called paper wallets. And these are just simple key pairs. So you use a software program that you maybe downloaded offline and your printer that was hardwired to your computer to print out a securely generated private key and the associated address. And you often had a QR code for that receiving address on the paper wallet. So you could pull that out of your safe and go ahead and send Bitcoin to it from a hot or online wallet anytime you wanted to add to your savings. Now, they're called paper wallets but these could really be made out of any material. All that means is that you're generating a private key offline and you're storing that private key engraved in some type of medium. You could even engrave that private key in a piece of metal like a crypto key stack for later spending. Now, paper wallets have fallen out of favor somewhat because there are security issues and some privacy issues when it comes to address reuse. Many people made the mistake of trying to sweep their paper wallet funds into an online wallet and only spending a fraction of that paper wallet. And they thought that the rest of the Bitcoin would remain in that wallet. But the problem is, is the change from a transaction was often sent back to different addresses in the hot wallet and not back to the paper wallet address. 
So this led to people getting confused and sometimes losing funds. So generally, it's not a recommended way to store cryptocurrency offline anymore unless you really understand what you're doing. Now this led to the advent of the second and much more popular version of offline wallets called hardware wallets. And you've probably heard of hardware wallets before. These are little USB connected devices like the Keep Key, the Trezor, or the Ledger. And what these are, are these are specialized devices that securely generate a seed phrase and then securely generate your private keys and addresses completely offline without needing a network connection. But these also have the great feature of being able to sign transactions for you so you can broadcast them online for spending. Now the neat thing about hardware wallets is when you plug that USB device in your computer to sign and send a spending transaction, the computer is not able to access the private keys on that device. These wallets use a very particular and very limited protocol for communicating back and forth between the PC and the hardware wallet. The only thing the hardware wallet will allow are connections and little commands that will uh, request transactions to be signed and uh, actually send those signed transactions back to broadcast on the network. All the signing and all of your approval for that transaction to be signed occurs on the hardware wallet. And there's no way for anything on the PC like malware or somebody that's uh, doing something else malicious to access the actual private keys on the hardware wallet. And that's really great for security. So that leads me into the final topic for this tutorial, which is why would we have offline wallets in the first place? If you're new to Bitcoin and you set up your first wallet, you're more than likely setting up a hot or online wallet. You might be setting up a wallet on your mobile device like your Android or iPhone device, or you might be even setting up a full node on your PC. And what that means is your private keys are stored on that general purpose computing device. And that can lead to security problems for you down the road. So if you're on a mobile phone or a PC connected to a network, that PC can be vulnerable to malware and hackers. So malicious software or malicious parties accessing your device could theoretically try to steal your private keys. And remember, when it comes to Bitcoin, your keys control your funds. If somebody else gets access to your private keys, they now own the funds, they now can spend them and steal them from you. So what offline wallets do is they create what's called an air gap between the network itself where all of the hackers and the malware lie and your very important private keys. If you completely generate your keys offline, that means that there's no way that they were ever accessible on a computer network that could be vulnerable to malware or hackers. And when you store your keys offline for the long term, that means again that nobody's able to access those private keys unless they have physical access to them. And for most of us, it's much harder for somebody to break into your home and break into your safe or break into your bank safety deposit box to steal your private keys than it is for some widely distributed malware to end up on your computer and try to steal your keys. So ultimately, this is much more secure for long-term fund storage. Now, I'm not recommending you generate, store funds on, and sweep a paper wallet every time you wanna go spend Bitcoin or am I recommending that you carry around your ledger or your keep key with you every time you wanna spend some cryptocurrency? It's perfectly fine and generally secure to store spending money amounts of cryptocurrency on a phone or on a PC. Where offline wallets come in is for your long-term storage. Just like you don't keep all of your spending money in cash or your wallets or even keep all your spending money in your checking account, it's a good idea to have a separate inaccessible savings account for your longer term storage of your US dollars. And this is the same concept with cryptocurrency. If you have crypto funds that you're saving for a rainy day or for the long term that you wanna use uh, later for some other item, it's best to keep the private keys for those funds offline. Because again, that's an air gap between you and all of the malicious actors that are out there on the internet. 
So as always, there is a written article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies these tutorials if you maybe prefer reading as a medium for learning. And as always, I want to thank you very much for listening to this tutorial and learning something new with me today.